Dream, search, drive. Cars.coza. Fafti Klek knows that no matter what you've done for your country and the ladies, you can still get caught with your pants down. Don't faff around. Just claim via WhatsApp and get paid out quick fast. Budget, the official insurer of good South Africans. Hello and welcome back to the Cars.coza podcast studio. My name is Chira De Siena and today I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by Martina Bina, who is the MD of Volkswagen South Africa. Martina, hi. Hi, Chiro. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you for coming down and, and joining us in our little podcast studio. We are so, so happy to have you and Sia here as well from Volkswagen South Africa. How is Cape Town treating you? No, oh, very well, very well. I'm always looking for some reasons also to come to Cape Town. So because we don't have offices here, uh, but I'm, I'm loving to be in Cape Town. So uh, yeah, thanks for inviting me. No, wonderful. Thanks for coming. So um, by way of introduction, Martina um, has a fairly long association with, with South Africa. Um, Martina was here in 2018 for a few years. She was the brand director of Volkswagen. Uh, she then went back to Germany. They recalled her to the motherland <laughs> to go and, and serve there for a bit. And she is now back in South Africa in a fairly, uh, pretty much the head honcho role, um, running what is South Africa's, what is one of South Africa's largest brands. So we are um, very privileged to have her here today and to hear directly from Volkswagen uh, what, what this company has in store for South Africa and the sort of challenges they're facing in our market as well. So very grateful to to have Martina here. Um, Martina, I suppose let's maybe get going um, by just chatting about a little bit of maybe the history of Volkswagen. So it's a brand which is intricately tied into the South African motoring landscape. I think everyone has a Volkswagen story, no matter what, your your grandfather had one, your uncle had one, whatever the case may be. Um, What I'm quite interested in, how much does the the history of the brand influence your decision making today about the future of the brand? Actually, quite a lot because we are we are very proud also about our South African footprint. I mean, we've been here now for seventy two years. I think we are the wow. the. The, like outside Germany, we are the oldest VW company outside Germany, not even outside Europe, but outside Germany wow. with the 72 years. And, and, and also kind of when you, when you today look at the South African roads and streets, you, you see this heritage, right? The city golf every now and then kind of gives me a smile. <laughs> uh, the the Vrpa tradition. So that's kind of this heritage that, that, that plays a big role and also our strong local footprint. So, so probably from, from the vehicles we do produce currently, the, the Polos and the Polo Vivos, 35% of our whole production is for the South African market. So we are not like an export company only but we've got our roots and and a strong footprint in South Africa so also for every future decision we're going to take with this for the plant also for future products we want to be also rooted in South Africa and not kind of not to export only right so that's 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 very important for us that we also kind of keep that cool uh, spirit and that that love brand thing going wonderful and um, we were saying just now while we were having a coffee I actually Sadly, I've not visited your plant. Something which we will sort out. Coming in Q2. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> Q3. Q3, 2023. Just yeah. the commitment in front of everybody, right? Yes. Yeah. No, let's make a public commitment. <laughs> Chiro and Kaza Koza will be going to Kericha to, to the VW plant. But you mentioned that quite interestingly, and it's quite a proud, proud thing for South Africa, we are the only country that makes Polo GTI. Hundred percent, yeah. So that we kind of uh, more and more taking over responsibility from from uh, from Pamplona in Spain. So Pamplona produces still some Polos, um, and we are the only Polo GTI, and we are doing the uh, with so manufacturer Polo GTI, so manufacturer Polo right hand drive currently already. So yeah, that's the 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 plant also kind of. I think has grown in 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 the VW history. So uh, we are a fully uh, a trusted plant, and the the quality is um, is accepted, not only accepted but hold in high regard. So, yeah, we are playing a big role in the in the VW plant scheme. One hundred twenty one, by the way, across the world. One hundred and twenty one plants. Yeah, goodness me. No. And uh, how much of your role right now is is managing exports and production, and sort of managing you know the local brand? 
so I'm my biggest part of what I currently do is uh, is managing the future and thinking on like how do we proceed and how do we go forward in in with our with us with a strategy because that that plant runs super well super efficient we we have manufacturing excellence we've got a, a very uh, kind of experienced team in in producing vehicles so the, not saying the plant runs itself every now and then there's, there's <laughs> that, that, that's the daily business of manufacturing but uh, but I'm really kind of uh, with with my with the board team or with the home management team like taking the brand to the future what, what's next level in South Africa that's that's what keeps me awake at night <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they're glad to have you here um let's maybe chat about future strategy then and there's there's quite a lot to talk about so something that um i've been maybe a little bit personally frustrated by is is vw sort of keeps teasing us and saying right we're going to sell evs in south africa we're just kind of not going to tell you guys when <laughs> so so i mean is there a more concrete strategy in place around your evs uh, yet I at, at the moment uh, we, we're getting um, the first cars into South Africa end of this year, beginning of next year. It's still a bit pending, but we're getting the, the, the an ID4 test fleet, as we call it, uh, which is not three cars, but which is a bigger amount of cars uh, by the end of this year or beginning of next year, which have which hasn't been negotiated with our engineering in Germany now. So okay. they are they are about to come the first. And, and we've got sorry to say, mm. but we've got released uh, Audi e-trons, right? So we are selling already the the e-trons in South oh, of Africa. Of course, yeah. okay, no fair point, but I suppose under just obviously yeah, Audi yeah. Plan. but um the uh an id3 is there plans for id3 i think we'll have to to throw all our eggs um in not one basket but be be very specific on uh, to to kind of get a get a get a decent amount of volume on the electric vehicles so we're looking at id4s we're looking at the at the SUV version of the ID4, and um, we've been with our dealers um, to to Germany last week. There was a huge event for the Global VW World was called Brand Experience, and we also got a first glimpse on that ID2, which was revealed to to the to the international press also international media uh, a couple of weeks ago so everybody was quite pleased with this id2 so that's also something we will go for in in the future to to really kind of put some volumes on on some models and not have 10 here 20 there 30 there so yeah, yeah. i think you know my i've been really lucky to experience a lot of electric cars now and um they make great commuter vehicles. I know Winston from Grid Cars, he always gets annoyed with me because I say EVs are great commuter vehicles. And he says, no, you can road trip in EVs. And he's putting a lot of effort into that. But in my opinion, what South Africa actually needs is, is EVs at an affordable price that don't necessarily have, you know, 7,000 kilometers range on, on one charge, but just, you know, for commuting purposes. No, fully agree. Mm. So, I, I mean, the the use case of EVs, I think, in every country or in almost every country, is you don't do Johannesburg, Cape Town on a daily or weekly basis. You probably mm. do that twice a year. So, probably most of the people fly anyway. So, I fully agree to to that. The 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 daily use is commuting from home to work and back, and then probably you have a a weekend, uh, a free weekend. So, um, and for that, so so our dealers were quite um let's say happy with the announcement of this id2 will be below 25000 euros and said no that could could work i'm not so sure i think for the for the it, it will work but for for really going into volume in in africa in south africa i think we still need to look at a at something like a global ev yeah. um it, not not probably 2023 but probably 26 27 uh, to to really get into volumes because we also have to get the infrastructure right we'll have to we face some challenges with yes. load shedding in south africa so we'll have to get the energy supply right but mm. uh, yeah and and I suppose um, I mean correct me if I'm wrong, but for a for a company that has a strong manufacturing presence in South Africa, you you have sort of two EV challenges, so to speak. You've got to sell them in showroom floors, but you also have to start making them quite soon. Is is that are, are plans there starting to shape up as well? So I was, um, you're right. So the the first step is getting EVs into the country on an FBU basis, on a fully built unit basis, import them, and then just like grow and also get South African customers experience them. There is this thing like range anxiety. Will it really work here in South Africa with load shedding? So that's why, why all manufacturers, we are trying to get now these fully built units in, probably get some uh, support from the government also for that. Um, and and I'm always saying I see us producing electric vehicles probably by 2035 in our South African plant. 
Why is that? That's that's also related to our, as I said, strong local footprint. So when we start producing, and, and I take this 35% share in the local market, and which I don't want to lose. I don't want to be only an export plant for, for EVs to, to Europe or to somewhere, right? So um, we, we would probably need, like let's say, 50,000 units, uh, one model a year to, to make it uh, meaningful to localize, also for suppliers to come, right? Because you need a decent amount of cars. So 50,000, uh, let's take the 30% share, we have to like sell around 15,000 in South Africa. 15,000 EVs, one model. So it, it'll... In, in what time period? That's a year. An annual volume. So we do 23, 20, 20 to 25,000 polos a year, 20 to 25,000 vivos a year. Okay. And that's what I would also want to target then with EVs once we are here. Because, we, as I said, we're not only producing and then exporting, but we want the local footprint. So it'll take a, a bit to grow the South African market to then mm. take these 15,000 uh, units a year from that mathematical example. So that's why I think it, it'll take a while um, to get there and to, to, to produce there. Okay. Also, what what in in terms of the the the, the fatherland uh, Germany in this case, uh, mm. what what is a bit um, a roadblock currently is that the logistics costs have increased tremendously for that export to Europe. So with uh, with the, with the diesel for ships becoming for vessels becoming more and more expensive, that logistic cost is a nightmare from South Africa to Europe. Um, for EVs, we currently even would have to ship batteries from Europe uh, to South Africa and then ship the vehicles up. So that adds too much to our CO2 footprint um, that, um, and, and the cost. So I think it takes a while to, to grow EVs in South Africa and also in Africa, which, which I foresee in the future for us being, being the, probably the export hub and, and then we'll be there in 2035. Or 2034. So don't. It's not exactly about this year. Just saying, it needs a bit of time to build that demand uh, in in South Africa. That's very interesting. So so essentially, I mean, up until 2035 and and beyond, cars like Polo are still very important to the VW brand. Hundred percent. So we're looking at a third vehicle in uh, in the Carija plant, which will be an ICE vehicle again. It's around 20. That's 2026, probably 2027. Um, and and we partner a lot with uh, with Brazil currently. So because Brazil and Latin America and to a certain extent also India, they've got the same market demands in terms of being rather the smaller vehicles, the A, A zero segment as A we zero. call on. So mm. the the Polo and the Vivos, um, and they are also not transforming that fast into um, uh, electric vehicles as as Europe does or as China does. So there's a there's a nice alliance between the three of us to kind mm. of. Look into future products um, and and yeah to align also in terms of development. So that uh, that car is we are looking at is uh, is kind of in partnership with Brazil. Ah, I have a question about Brazil actually, but I'll get there in a second. So this this A zero, the third car you're talking about at Carica, is is that a sort of up replacement? Is it that sort of end of the market? Um, no, it sits. Um, and below the T-Cross, okay. it's an, we call it A0 entry SUV currently. So it's okay. an SUV body style, but it's on the Polo platform. Okay, interesting. So, yeah, which also makes sense for economies of scale because we've got the platform already. And, and, and again, talking about that supplier uh, and, and the need of high volumes on the platforms. And, and I see. Yeah. So, so, so physically, the car will be similar in dimensions to T-Cross, but you're going to bring it in at a lower price point. Hundred percent. Okay. And it will not. I mean, it will will not be like as SUV-ish as the T-Cross is, but mm. uh, more SUV-ish okay. than the Polo is. And you'll you'll let us know as soon as you have a. We can have a look at one of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we're planning something like a like a sneak preview. So I we'll need still the final tick in the box from from Wolfsburg that this is okay. where we're gonna go to. But we'll we're planning something like a sneak preview. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's quite exciting. Yeah. Um. Quickly on Brazil, something that I get asked about all the time is will Volkswagen South Africa consider a half ton bucky and you have the Severo in Brazil is is has it ever been considered for SA is it perhaps on the uh, in the future plans it, we we've uh, also in in two of my previous jobs I've we've done uh, multiple calculations to get the current Severo <laughs> 
uh, convert it into a right-hand drive because unfortunately the downside of our Brazilian partnership is that all these countries are left-hand oh, drive countries. Yes, of course. Except some uh, will try to like them Caribbean right-hand drive, by the way, okay. which is uh, Suriname, Cayman Islands, so their volume unfortunately is not sufficient. Um, so we've done multiple calculations, but now the nice thing with... Um, with this A0 entry SUV I was talking about is that it provides also an opportunity for a even bigger ha than half ton bucky, so 750 wow. kilogram buckies. Okay. Um, and this is something we we also look into, and I'm trying to tell that every every time publicly to kind of put some pressure on our calculations. So there, <laughs> there, there is hope, but there is not hope for the current Savera, but okay. probably for something nice to come in the future. That's a very interesting mm. one. Thank you very much for for sharing that with us. So so we start, we're sort of starting to see a picture now of of um, Volkswagens maybe the next. 10 years i suppose i mean how how far is your planning do do you look at um are you looking at a, a 10 year period a 20 year period i mean what what's sort of in your in your head at the moment so with we we are working re, uh, currently on our strategy as, uh, with the team like our internal strategy um we, we we not only internal we call it vision 2035 so actually we're looking at a, at, at this 12 year period with the target of uh, of currently saying we produce mid of next decade. So that's how that time horizon, uh, if we produce mm. EVs mid of next decade. So that's how that time horizon uh, happened to be 12, 12 years now. Okay. Yeah. And and uh, is, is Volkswagen's strategy ice and EV or is there perhaps hydrogen in the mix? Are there other energies which perhaps are being explored? So we are, we, so hydrogen... Is is I think not even is also not on the global um, scheme of, of mm. Volkswagen probably to power the plant that could help us yes. uh, in and terms of load maybe. shedding and the <laughs> ships. I think per se from what I know from hydrogen technology, it's 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 probably a solution for trucks and buses, but it's it's not a solution for for passenger vehicles, and we are we are only into passenger vehicles and light commercial vehicles, mm. um, but. But still um, not finally decided. So kind of, I've got probably the, the little finger is still a, a bit in. Is hydrogen an option? Um, we are we are discussing in, of course, to 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 bridge a bit the 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 uh, two two EVs to look into hybrid technology. It's not being locally produced, but to import some um, some hybrid. Um, technologies. We are, uh, our fuel currently, the fuel quality in South Africa currently does not uh, work with the with the engines we use for uh, for for hybrid technology in in Wolfsburg. So that's different to to other manufacturers. But by 2027, there is the next um, fuel quality level expected in South Africa, uh, better fuel quality. I don't know, it's called level two or something. And with that, we could uh, we could look into into hybrids again. So. Okay, and we've got this plug-in hybrids, which which I think is the best technology to bridge into EVs. So where you mm. already plug uh, mm. the, something in the socket. Unfortunately, it's also the most expensive you, because you've got best of both worlds. Yes. You've got the whole ICE technology, then you've got a almost whole EV technology. Yes. So I'm not so sure whether that's the right thing to go to for mm. South Africa. And then uh, then we've got this this the the, the ETSI as we call it, so where you just have a, have a bit of electric support. Um, so, so we we debating, but this n this is not going to happen be mm. before twenty twenty seven because of the fuel quality and the engines uh, used with uh, VW globally. Interesting. Okay, so basically, it, you are hamstrung by the quality of South African fuels, right? Yeah. Now. Yeah, that's quite sad to hear. And I have heard that from a couple of manufacturers as well. Because I drove, um, Toyota did a test with their RAV4 plug-in hybrid where they gave it to a couple of media houses. And I, I came away from driving that thinking, this is such a great solution for South Africa. But like you say, because the, the drivetrain is quite complicated, yeah. the car is quite expensive, and that sort of offsets what you would have saved on fuel. But the convenience factor is great, I think, with, yeah. with a plug-in hybrid. So plug-in hybrid goes... I mean, we, we have plug-in hybrids, of course, only, not of course, but we'll have plug-in hybrids globally in, in the bigger vehicles like the, the Passats or the, 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 the Tiguans, which makes sense because you would like Polo and plug-in hybrid would not work. I mean, you pay almost as much as you pay for the Polo again than for the, for the plug-in hybrid yes. technology or half of the price of the Polo, which, which doesn't make sense. In Europe, the uptake was quite good, but mainly because you've got subsidies from the governments or like the likes of London saying you can only come in with you when you've got a hybrid car. So I think the technology itself is great and and also bridges into EVs because you can 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 overcome range anxiety because you've still got your 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 combustion engine. 
but yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. Let's let's discuss when we get closer to 2027 what yes. we must do. <laughs> so basically, I mean, so the, the the cars that are familiar to South Africans right now will remain familiar to South Africans for quite a while. So you'll be able to buy an ice polo for you know at least the next 10 years. So, so. I, I would not say forever, but you will be able to buy yeah. an ice polo and you will be able to buy an ice mm. vivo for for a very long time. Yeah, and okay. then you'll you'll hopefully when we have the final tick in the box. Get another nice addition to the Polo family with our A0 entry SUV, and uh, we, ah, we yes. are looking at okay. the like the the current stars of VW will remain in in our range. <laughs> um, Polo is quite an interesting one, you know, because it's because it's an immensely popular car in South Africa. It almost gets used, um, especially by us as motoring journalists, as as a benchmark, you know. So, for instance, I'll often say to myself. Oh, uh, I can buy that classic car. You know, it's the, it's the same price as a Polo. You know, it's like almost part of the conversation in South Africa. But um, from what what we've seen, just watching the the Polo, it seems like um, VW has been under quite a bit of pressure, and the price of the mm. Polo is mm. is climbing quite high. I mean, is that um, is that something that's strategic, or is it something that maybe you've just had to you've been at the mercy of market forces a, around the world, and that's why the the price is climbing. Yeah, I think that was um, that was mainly driven through the semiconductor crisis. So we've been, and we're not through yet, but it, it's getting better. But the last two years in terms of semiconductor supply, I think has been a nightmare for all manufacturers and uh, sometimes different from model to model. We'll, we'll head to price uh, within VW to, to still play a role when it comes to allocation. So I, we, we know that it was a very fine line. But uh, so allocation of semiconductors, of course, because we, we, we were in short supply and uh, in, in all models. And allocation internally was happening first to the to the different brands of the groups, um, and then in, within according to contribution margin of the models, and then according to contribution models of the countries within one model. So we were competing with the contribution margin of UK or Germany when it comes to polo allocation. So we had to kind of catch. And South Africa is not the the, the the country with the highest contribution margin you can you, you probably mm. can imagine so we had to to a certain extent price to to get allocation of semiconductors uh, in the polo but um but we are fully aware of that that this can't uh, can't carry on forever and i mean probably you've realized normally volkswagen prices first of april and um, this year there was no price increase first of april so we are pretty much aware of um yeah, the market um, yeah, sentiment. The market sentiment mm. and also getting back in the sweet spot, let's put it like that. <laughs> I, I suppose it's quite tricky. I mean, I'm just thinking now, you know, if, if the price of a vehicle gets pushed up by, say, inflationary pressures or semiconductor pressures, whatever the case may be, then... It, is it challenging then for the for the manufacturer to go backwards and to sell that car at a previous price point? I mean, is that is that quite a challenging thing to do? So I think it, it's it's not going to happen that we'll reduce prices yeah. because you can the, because there's customers who bought it at that price already, yes. uh, and that kind of translates then into a residual value when you when you kind of sell it. And if we would now reduce prices, uh, still our headquarter of course would never be in favor of reducing prices. Me neither. But the kind of you can't you can't just go back. Mm. You can kind of wait and put a bit a hold to it but uh, you can't go back but you can yeah. of course put nice um, financing actions in place and uh, tactical support here and there so i see um, so yeah. make it easier to buy yeah. the car to to okay. support the purchasing but you can't re i think you can't reduce yeah. prices to to be fair also yeah. to those who have paid a higher price because look at the the uh, the stir that elon Musk just created when he just dropped all the tesla prices yeah. overnight i mean that it's it's not a great tactic i think no. yeah I, I see that um talking about uh, supply pressures something that i've picked up quite extensively on social media is the frustration amongst your fans amongst vw fans are around Golf 8R. Has there been a particular problem with that particular model get, getting it into South Africa? Well, I think uh, the, the the worst comes to the worst. Uh, so all came together in that uh, in, uh, in in the Golf R. So first, in 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 terms of development, so there is not huge development to be done to South Africa for the specific market, but still there is a bit of development to be done and a bit of homologation and release which needs to be done in the headquarter. 
Um, so not not a, a bit of engineering work. So allocations have been because of short supply of the Gulf R in globally anyway have been allocated to somewhere else. Then there was semiconductor shortage. So so this model really hit South Africa at a very unfortunate or didn't hit South Africa at uh, at a very unfortunate time. Um, I think everything uh, everything came together with that, and it w we would have loved to introduce it much earlier yes, because we I'm know sure. that it's the yeah. one of the coolest uh, vehicles we've got in the range, and that uh, that South African heart beats a beats mm. a lot for 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 Golf R. Um, there is not really so it's not that it's not us that have been <laughs> that have yes. delayed the introduction, but it's it really was was a bit of a was a bit of an unfortunate timing uh, also with with the headquarter. Mm. But good news now it's there, and good news is we'll release the final pricing on Tuesday next week. Ah. And very good news it it will be well below one million South African rand, and well okay. below. So the emphasis is on the well. So, <laughs> yeah, so it's not on the nine ninety nine 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 nine. Um, that's very interesting. Okay, so finally that that sort of uh, frustration is going to be released, and and I think that um, for me seeing people get upset on on social media, you know, my view has always been. Why would Volkswagen intentionally hold this no, car back? No, it's no. not intentional. No. You know, why would you hold back like one of your like you say one of the most exciting cars? It's yeah. definitely not intentional. No, hundred percent not. Yeah. So the, yeah. the whole team is um, is always fighting to get the vehicles we want for South Africa to to get mm. them as as soon as possible. And and there's been a lot of pain in I know in in uh, the, the the communications department because you guys have been very pushy. You guys, the <laughs> the journalists, yeah. Um, and and also in our product marketing team, they're they're working like not day and night, but they're working a lot to to get them as soon as possible. So okay. yeah, okay. and we are very happy to have them here now. So please celebrate, yay! <laughs> Fireworks. So so, so then uh, so you'll have pricing on Tuesday, yeah, but well. but when will a, a South African be able to walk into a showroom and actually leave with a with a Golf 8R? <laughs> So be, be, because we are not selling millions of them, unfortunately, yeah. there will not be a Golf R in every every showroom, but yeah. the first cars are in the country already. And then there's another vessel which has been delayed, but there is another vessel with uh, some of the Golf Rs on it. So it will be in the in some of the showrooms, the lucky ones who get it first uh, within the month of April. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's, so it's this month. Yeah. All right. There we go. Well, you heard it here first on, on Cars of Cosa. Um, it's, it's amazing to me. Um, well, maybe it's not surprising, but it's still amazing to me how much uh, a part of the motoring conversations that happen in this country every day in involve Volkswagen. Some of them are, are great, and obviously some of them are, are, quite, uh, are quite difficult. And something that I've always wanted to ask someone at Volkswagen is around this issue of what seems to be a, um, a theft risk and a hijack mm -hmm. risk ar around Polo. Now, the way I see it is that essentially the Polo is a victim of its own success because there's so many on the road. The demand for parts is so high that essentially, you know, stealing a Polo and stripping it to pieces can actually make you quite a bit of, a bit of money. And it, it seems to me that, that this is largely out of Volkswagen's control. But I imagine it is something that you guys chat about at head office. So, I mean, is there, is there anything Volkswagen can do about this situation? Have you, have you, I'm sure you've discussed it. So we are, we are indeed trying everything. As you're rightly saying, we are a victim of our own success. So there is a lot of polos on the roads, fortunately. So the likelihood that you can steal a polo is also quite high. Mm. Um, our security, so we've got an own security department, not only for the vehicles, but also for the plant and whatever. So we, 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 are, really, we are in touch with uh, the South African police service to, to really talk of what, ca what could we do. So every we, we are looking again into this can we can we do trackers um, in the vehicles, not only in the polos, but in all our vehicles from 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 checkpoint eight? So when when the when the vehicles leave the plant, um, but so far there was not really a kind of th this is the idea, this is the silver bullet um, mm. solving this problem coming up. But we are fully aware of it, and and whatever we can do, <laughs> and whoever has got a great idea, highly welcome to to let us know what we can do. Yeah, yeah. it's it is a difficult situation, and I, I I sympathize with Volkswagen on this. I mean, part part of it is just maths, right? Yeah. I mean, if if the if the car park in South Africa consists of a a very high number of a certain vehicle, it's just maths that that's going to be you know a, a stolen vehicle. Um, but it's just it's an interesting part of the conversation, and and I'm I'm glad that you were you were happy. To, to chat about it and I think that you know from our side um, we really we wish you guys 
all the best with that in trying to you know try and mitigate the situation yeah so but but really if if someone's got an idea what we can do is we, we chat to the police we we check technology but uh yeah yeah okay well, th well thank you for chatting with us about that um Onto, onto maybe some, some more nostalgia and uh, a little bit about the past and maybe a bit about the future. The, the sedan segment in South Africa, just it just died. You know, it, it got killed by the desire for SUVs, I, I suppose. And, um, and Volkswagen had a long history of sedans, Passat, Jetta, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, is there, do you foresee any time where the sedan might make a comeback? So, so first of all, we've got a sedan in our range, right? Yeah. So we we recently the introduced sedan, yeah. the Polo <laughs> sedan, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> which is which is kind of probably the last uh, the last warrior mm. in in the sedan segment. Um, I I don't see really again the sedan segment growing, um, and that's a global trend. And uh, in, and also the kind of the shift into SUVs is also a global trend. You see it almost uh, almost everywhere. Um, we are looking already a bit beyond what's next, uh, what's, what's beyond SUVs, um, but it's not a sedan again from what we see currently in the design trends in the, in the 30th or whatever. Um, we might see a, a bit of a comeback in the EV space again, but not a three box design, but like probably a bit of a sedan niche body style. Mm. Uh, but no, I'm not saying it has it, it had its days, but uh, it's it's not it's not the the, the next uh, yeah. the next thing to come. I think sort of uh, SUVs, I suppose, are just I don't know. They have that that sort of status factor maybe around them. The high ride height, uh, the gravel gravel road capability. Yeah. No, you, the people sit. The, the, you've got a good side of the street. You feel like yes. safe with a higher seating position. Mm. I think you you kind of feel like you look cool. You look state of the art. So I'm not saying you don't <laughs> look cool in a sedan, but I think mm. SUV is is the, currently the hottest shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm I'm such a fan of a fast sedan. Like mm. I really liked Arteon with the Golf R engine. I thought that was a really cool car. And uh, unfortunately, obviously, also also had to go. Yeah. Um, I mean, when when you guys have to make those decisions, is it is it like a little bit painful? Is it like ah, oh, you know, we wanted Arteon to work? Yeah. So when uh, I was talking about that trip with the dealers to Germany for that brand experience, as it mm. was called, and then they, they, we also saw some Arteon. And, and you're right. So design wise, it's striking. So everybody looks at it. So, yeah, no cool. Can we get it back? Probably. <laughs> but it, it it kind of it never sold like yeah like not even the three digit number in a month so and kind of how many how many vehicles do you want to have in the mm. or can not do you want to have i want to have all vehicles but how many vehicles also from a complexity point of view can you afford in your range in terms of selling a, a two-digit number in the month uh, so i think it's everybody still likes the design for the, of the arteon mm. specifically but do we really sell a lot no we don't so mm. probably that that's a bit of the yeah, the decision we'll have to make in terms of and we are we are a volume brand and we want to be a volume brand so mm. we've got some icons like the Touareg, for example which also doesn't sell three digit numbers a month but um but to kind of have a premium at the end of the range that's good but for the rest i think we'll, we'll go for volume and then have within the volumes the the nice like the gti's or mm. the r's but uh, yeah not introduce too many models so I, I wanted to ask you if you find it I, I find it very curious that South Africans don't like station wagons and you go to Germany and there's just station wagons everywhere right I mean is that something that's also sort of mystified you over the years have you come to just accept it that we don't want station wagons in this country I tried again also with this trip <laughs> because that, that's something which strikes me why didn't they why never this why this never happened in South Africa I have yeah. no clue because they're so practical and to me being a German they also look nice but obviously that the, they look the South, yeah. The South African eye does not go so well with the station wagon design. I have no yeah. clue why that is, but they were like, no, no, the Arteon looks great, but no, no, this one, the Passat, we look, take, take a look at the Passat variant again. No, no, this one not. Because okay. <laughs> there's an Arteon wagon, hey. There's the shooting brake. The shooting yeah, brake, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually saw one because, you know, a lot of car ads are filmed in Cape Town. I actually yeah. saw one yeah. because they, they had closed down a street and I happened to have a friend who lived on that street. Yeah. So we, we got to watch the advert being shot. It looks like such a nice car, yeah. that shooting no, it, brake. It, to me, it is a very yeah, nice it's car. it's beautiful, the, yeah. But for, for like the, the sedans, for example, they've never been, or not, like the, not the last 30 years, they've never been that big in Europe. Or in in Western Europe, I would say, 
but the but the the station wagons, and that's probably different to South Africa. But I have no explanation why that is. I have no explanation. <laughs> I um I actually made a video, a parody video on our channel. I'll send you I'll send you the link where I shot it like a carte blanche film, but very satire, and I I coined this word anti station wagonism. So so <laughs> basically, and it's quite cool because now people will tweet that word at me, you know, and say, oh, because of anti station wagonism, now we can't have nice wagons, you know. And uh, and so so we made that film a couple of years ago, and it just it just got worse after that. Yeah. I don't know if it was our fault, but <laughs> but after that, even more manufacturers pulled their wagons, you know. And that's I just think it's 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 a pity for me. I really like that st- that shape of car. Yeah, you know? it's so it's it's it looks good, mm. and and I mean the the RTN shooting brake really looks stunning. Yes, and yeah. then you kind of if you look at the boot, you can store a lot of. So it's it's highly practical, but it looks good. Yes. Or and it looks good, not but. And it looks good, but th- yeah. there's just no uptake. There's just no love for it, yeah. I think it was you guys, yeah. <laughs> Anti-station organism and now. I was trying Here to we highlight go. the yeah. issue, yeah. <laughs> but, but, I mean, you do have some really exciting stuff coming, especially in a bucky mad country like this. I mean, how, how are you feeling about, about Amarok? Uh, fantastic so that's that was so the dealer launch took place on the 18th of march now that we've, we see the first units coming through the month month of march was a huge sales success of course it, i mean in the launch month you can always sell more uh the supply is is ramping up uh and, and we are very happy with with this vehicle i think it's it was the right decision uh, to to go together with ford um so yeah that's a bright future in the commercial vehicle space for us I I I was quite curious about that decision to work with Ford. What was it perhaps just um a budgetary thing where where to develop a whole new Amarok would have just cost too much and that money needs to go to your EV development? Is that sort of where the relationship with Ford came from? So we've we've partnered with Ford in the in the past already quite successfully. So back then in Europe the Sharan and the Ford Galaxy, they've oh, been yes. always like same. Mm. We had this cooperation. We we know how it, it worked with Ford. I mean we've even been in the in the Ford plant in Europe. Uh, the the Portugal plant initially has been a Ford plant. And then we we took it over um, with the uh, with the Sharan, and now the T Rock is produced there. Uh, yeah, it's partly um, the 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 viability, the feasibility. So I think from both uh, both sides, but it's also kind of who's good in in doing what. So and and Ford is, has has a huge history in 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 Bucky's, mm. also with the ladder frame. Um, I think which is quite a quite a quite a good thing for for like a, a real Bucky Bucky. Yes, <laughs> if, I can, if I can put it like that, and uh, and we've been quite uh, quite uh, or we've progressed quite a lot in the in the electric vehicle space. So I think that kind of okay, let's do this together, and and uh, half of the half the investment there, and and then on the other hand, we do the EV now together partially. Um, I think that's the that's the way to go when the industry is at that point. Kind of, w- what can we afford? We can't afford the the same amount of ICE engines and then uh, ramp up the EV space at mm. the same time. Also, like hugely, then then rather to partner and and try to make ICEs happen and EVs happen in the same time. I see, I see, and uh, as, and you alluded to the fact that that you and Ford, on the other hand, have this. They're going to take some of your EV platforms, correct? Am I correct? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and build their own cars. That's quite interesting as well. I wonder if I wonder if we'll see those here because Ford. I mean, well, it's, obviously, we don't have to chat about another brand, but they they seem to be going very light on their passenger car offering, and they're focusing more on on Bucky's, from what I can tell. Um, so I wonder if your if your ID four will have Ford competition. <laughs> I, 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 I have no clue. I think currently the, the plant at least is fully used for the Rangers and the Amarox, which is good because we need a lot of them. Um, but I, I kind of, you must ask my colleague, Neil. Yes, yes. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll get, we'll get, actually, we have had Neil here one day, actually. Uh, it was not, it was nice to chat to him as well. Now, when we were just having coffee before the, the shoot, uh, you mentioned that you were in town to have a look at an incubator with a business incubator which sounded really really interesting to me what, what what's what's that all about yeah so that's uh, in town is in town of Carija, right so yeah. <laughs> where, where our plant is based the the hustle and bustle of Carija. um so we we have we we are invested or we are in, investing money in, in a couple of csi initiatives mainly around the the plant where where also our employees um are and uh, and one of that is uh, is razor core that's that's an incubator for just like businesses 
Um, it's been there for quite a long time. They've got different concepts, but they kind of, they, they help young or not young, but they help entrepreneurs to kind of make their dreams come, come true. So you can uh, you can come there with a with a business idea and uh, and if it's when it's a good idea and has uh, has chances to to be successful you can uh, you can get coaching you can get access to um, to 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 internet to printers whatever you need to make your business successful there's a, there's a bookkeeper who would keep your books and help you kind of creating this management statements there's coaching on on marketing and sales. Uh, yeah, and we 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 visited that yesterday with with a board and also with our non-executive uh, uh, board members uh, just to kind of sh to show also what what work we are doing beyond uh, producing vehicles there and um, and I was I was I've been to them uh, 2018 already. Uh, and and now again and, and and there were five entrepreneurs telling us their stories in um, in in different businesses Pu purifying water. There is a guy doing filters for paint shops uh, who's doing business with us uh, and and others. And it was so it, the spirit was so great to see that kind of they, these guys gave their lives for for their business and spent their last penny initially to make it happen. And now you see it, it's been five uh, very successful entrepreneurs who also grew their businesses, who employ people now, and who go, some of them go globally now so that's just great to see amazing yeah if i'm not mistaken volkswagen um has quite a history of of supporting local suppliers as well to to supply your plant as well yeah cor mm. correct we'll we try to to support uh, small and medium enterprises around uh, like in the supplier it doesn't matter where they are but to to support them to to supply us and there's also some nice stories and when you come to visit our plant in q3 <laughs> we could also also kind of go to some of them but we'll also show you parts which which are like homemade South Africa, hundred percent percent black owned small and medium enterprises to, to oh, deliver that. to a plant. Yeah, yeah, I'd love that. That's really nice to hear. Um, so I I I suppose two. I wanted to ask two two personal questions. Um, one is one is easy. One's just about classics. But the other one is you know South Africa is uh, it's been a challenging wow for the country um load shedding has obviously been particularly challenging i mean from your perspective what do you, what's the what's the outlook for 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 sa and for volkswagen in sa i mean it feels to me that volkswagen is very committed to this country and and you're not going anywhere from from the sounds of things <laughs> 100 percent. no so we've been here for 72 years and we will be here for the next uh, 120 or i don't know so i, I don't want to commit us an end to that but no we are very committed to south africa we love being in south africa i'm personally very passionate about south africa yes. you, you know that I'm also very passionate uh, about Africa, so we can. I want to. Uh, I want to expand more into Africa mm. from here. So we, we kind of probably rename ourselves. So my, our, the legal team is already investigating to become Volkswagen Group Africa from here, oh. because also headquarters has given us the or uh, us the responsibility to to run the, the African business. So kind of we've got that that freedom to to kind of really amazing really go big from go big from here. Um, yeah, we we are very committed to that, but this can as you rightly said not but so that doesn't mm. take away our commitment but still we have to solve that um th these like issues and there's we currently the last weeks we had a lot of interactions with uh, with politicians on uh, politicians in terms of uh, load shedding and second or probably third biggest challenge is the the logistics so transnet the rails the roads the ports also give us a bit of headache but i see they're very like serious efforts to to kind of get that done on that load shedding note, because it's so important for us, mm. um, with with level five load shedding, um, we'll we'll have to stop the plant, and then we'll have to send four thousand people. Or one shift is not four thousand people, but then we'll have to send our employees home because we can't operate with uh, level five load shedding and with level six as well. Not so. Um, wow. it's, that's really, uh, it's, it's, of course, I know everybody is affected by load shedding, but it really hits us as a, as an industry, as a company, but also hits the people working for us and hits their families. And that's, that's really, a, it's a big thing. And, um, to be competitive also, I said, we've got 121 plants and now looking, looking at an additional product and, uh, telling headquarters, yeah, now nah, every now and then there is no power. Yeah. How we can't operate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. It's not the best kind of, um, like showcasing the capabilities of South Africa currently. So, but mm. I'm, I'm, I'm confident, uh, with that the, also with the help of the, of the new minister of electricity, um, there will be light at the end of the tunnel. 
Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a great pun as well. Hopefully yeah. there'll, def- there'll be some light. <laughs> Literally, there will be light. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, you know, doing business in South Africa is really challenging. I can't Im- even imagine the challenges of running a plant because, I mean, those schedules are so tight when building cars. You know, it's like, I don't know, one every few minutes. You, you, can't, you can't just be like, okay, well, n- this half hour, we just won't make cars. I mean, that's not how plants work. Yeah. But yeah. So really we, we, we do 680 a day and we're ramping up now to 710. We're increasing capacity currently. And um, so we've got and, and the agreement with, an, with, uh, with Nelson Mandela Bay Municipality where our plant belongs to. Uh, they, they've together with them we've negotiated when there is load shedding we rather go for a 24 hour f- uh, load shedding so this is why we then close close a whole day because you can't just it's not like a light you can't just switch it off mm. and i mean many people also in their homes facing challenges with their refrigerators going off and on again and uh, you will have to ramp down the plant so we would lose already units there and then of, with a standstill we we don't build of course and then we ramp, ramp it up it's not like 710 0 710 mm. but it's kind of going down still and going up again um, and that's why we opted in for a 24 hour to not ramp down every day for two hours but rather than ramp down once again once then stand still and then ramp up once again but it's 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 better than every day but it's less far far less than ideal Yo, it's tough. It and, really and is tough. And the paint shop is the most energy intense. So we okay. kind of we in we do we do whatever we can in terms of uh, PVs um, with PVs in the plant. We kind of want to want to go into wind wheeling, but wind wheeling is somewhere. So still, when there's load shedding, the winds go, but the grid is not coming, or the, or the power is not coming to us through the grid. So there is, we try to, but um, the, to kind of offset the, the 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 paint shop, that's that's a lot of uh, of effort. Mm. We've oh. got 14 megawatt we need for the plant. 14 megawatt. 14 megawatt, and currently we kind of do uh, we do two uh, 2.5 ourselves. By this year, we're gonna install another three, but still, it takes time. Where does that 2.5 come from? From PV. From PV. Mm. Okay, that's really interesting. Yeah, and I think that's something that's that's maybe not well understood um, um, by maybe the casual observer, and uh, as I understand it, is that. A VW plant doesn't necessarily just get told by you know by Wolfsburg, okay, you guys make the polo. It's more that the plant actually has to pitch on the on the business. You have to present yourselves as a as an attractive place to to build a particular model. Is is, is that how it works? That's that's how it's uh, developing now. So in yeah. the past, I think we've not always been, but it was a bit like you do the polo now. So mm. somebody took care of us. But uh, we are now claiming also more um, more responsibility, and um, and that's why we kind of pitch for that third model now, because we think it's the right model for for the African market. So uh, we are very proud of that. We, we that we not only get told what to produce uh, as kind of one of the plants, but that we are kind of considered as being uh, being a region, and therefore we'll we'll pitch and tell tell also headquarter what we think is good for the region. I see. Okay, and and um, that auto pavilion, which which I'm gonna visit soon <laughs> q3 2023 yes <laughs> um is is the plan to ex- expand that a little bit at, at the plant as well yeah so that we've got a fin- we've got a nice exhibition there of classic cars uh of the history of vw in south mm. africa but also like globally um we've got a very nice accessory shop so please don't forget to bring some money um <laughs> when you when you when you when you come and uh just it's just like yeah, it, it also adds to just not being a manufacturer, but also kind of having that heritage. You'll you'll be thrilled when you see it. I, I can't yeah. wait. I'm really really excited. Yeah. And uh, on on the uh, on the topic of classics, I mean, we're very um, passionate about classics here at Cars of Cosa. Uh, I'm lucky to own a, a few. That one sitting outside here, J- Justin, our director, has got a few. Hannes has got a few. A um, couple of our colleagues. And I mean, is is that something that you you personally passionate about? Sort of maintaining the classics around VW. Hundred uh, percent. So my kind of my there is a lot of uh, favorites in the history of of uh, VW and and the the group. So a, a, a sort of Porsche nine five six kind of would mm. be would be great. I love the the GTI is the first. I mean, I would love to have the first GTI in my in my garage. Uh, f- that that would be great. And and I think now we've been we've done done a lot of very very nice car, Carmen Ghia. I also mm. yeah. Yeah, uh, fantastic, that's a stunning fantastic car. car. Yeah. So yeah, no, that's that's I, quite important for us to to also keep that heritage alive. 
I, I think you need to get yourself a classic so you can join us on our sentimental gatherings <laughs> and bring it along to join us. I think that'll be great. I might steal one out of the the people's pav the auto pavilion. There we go. Mm. There we go. The 200 kilowatt city golf. That's the <laughs> that's the one we're interested. Probably. In. <laughs> I will freak you out with that one. Uh, Martina, it's it's been lovely. I, I I thank you very much for your time and uh, for your for your honesty and discussing the you know the difficult topics with us as well. Um, it's it's great to have you here and thanks for supporting Casa Cosa as well. Um, we have obviously a long standing relationship and uh, long may it continue. Yeah, no, hopefully. Uh, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. I, li I love uh, chatting to you guys. So <laughs> um, anytime again. Yeah, I think we we need to go to Wolfsburg again, I think. Ah. That was a great trip. I love Yeah, I trip. think that was a hint. <laughs> that was a fantastic trip. I actually, I got to, on that trip, um, one of my favorite pieces of trivia about Volkswagen is that the, 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 the German sausage is actually as a part number. 100%. But, and it is the most manufactured part yeah. in the Volkswagen portfolio. Yeah. And I got to have one of those sausages. And it's <laughs> also, it's also got a saying. Volkswagen branding. On on the sausage. On the sausage, uh, did, but it disappears when it when you kind of cook it or boil it or fry uh, it or whatever okay. you do. But when you buy them, it's got a Volkswagen Group branding on it. Ah, that yeah. that is fantastic. Yeah. Mine was covered in I don't know some sort of sauce or something like that. Yeah, yeah. No, you can't see it anymore. <laughs> uh, we'll we'll get there. We'll get there again. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Martina. It's been really lovely. And uh, you can catch this podcast if you want. If you don't particularly want to watch it, you want to listen to it. We are on all of your favorite podcast platforms as well. Check out our other podcasts. These models that are in front of us here are available on our Sentimental store. Which one is this? Let's have a look. That's an old Beetle. We've got lovely Volkswagen Caddies as well. We've got Combis. Check that out at sentimental.shop. Martina, enjoy the rest of your time in Cape Town. And let's do this again. You're very welcome. Come back in a couple of months and we'll, we'll catch up. I will. Yeah, thank you very much. It was great fun. Thank you. All right. Thanks very much for watching. Check out Cars at Cosa. We'd love it if you subscribe to our channel as well. And we'll see you on the next one. Okay, bye. Are you busy trying to decide between two cars, three cars, four cars, five cars, six cars, and getting absolutely lost in all of the specs and all of the different pricing? Well, we have an excellent compare tool on our main website and in our app for you to use. It's very detailed, it's very slick and quick and efficient, and I highly recommend it. I use it all the time when I'm doing research for our car shoots. So check it out, we'll put the link in the description below, and tell us what you think. Tell us if it helped you out. Cars.coza. Get insurance that pays out faster than the word Archie. Budget, the official insurer of good South Africans.